Hi, I'm Max, Head of Applications here at Laguna Tools, and we have a really cool project for you today. It's a Strat-style guitar body cut on the Laguna IQ. It's a really neat project for those of you that are looking to make a guitar, but it's also really cool if you've just been looking at buying a small CNC because we're going to cover pretty much everything that there is to do. From 2D cuts to 3D milling, we're going to flip the part over and cut the back side and we'll need to index it in order to do that. So regardless of what you're going to do with the CNC, by the end of this video, you're going to know how to pretty much do it all. Just to briefly describe the process, I'm bringing in a drawing that I found online and I'm going to trace it in a software called Rhino. Then I'm going to model that. Then I'll use RhinoCam, a plugin which exists within Rhino, to describe how I want to cut that. It's called tool pathing. And that is what's going to describe to the CNC whether you want to do a 3D cut or a 2D cut, what all that looks like. Uh, it's a really nice workflow because RhinoCam exists within Rhino. So instead of needing two separate programs to get all of this worked out, it actually happens in the same program. Any change that I make to the model is directly reflected in the tool paths. We're going to design this entire guitar to be cut with two bits. One of them is a 3 8 inch down flute, which is a flat bit that we're going to use for all the 2D milling. And the other one is a ball end, also a 3 8 inch, that we're going to be using to cut any 3D contouring. I picked up this fantastic Alderwood blank. It's one and three quarter inches already, which is the thickness of the guitar, so there's no need to fly cut it. And it looks fantastic. I'm not even sure I'm gonna paint this one. Now, I've been told I'm pretty good at milling, but I am definitely not a professional luthier. So I found everything for this project on Amazon, and uh, it's already pretty much ready to go. In fact, there are links to the parts in the description below. Next, we're gonna take a quick look at the steps that I did within Rhinoceros. Modeling in Rhino may at first appear intimidating. There are certainly a lot of buttons, but as I'm gonna show you, the process for making this guitar is actually pretty straightforward. In this first stage, all that we're doing is just tracing out the 2D shapes that we'll use to model the guitar. So I've traced this outer contour, I've traced all these interior curves, and in the next step, I'm going to use the extrude command to turn it into a solid surface. I've extruded the outer shape. I've also extruded all of these interior curves. And then what I'm not showing you here is I used a simple command called Boolean difference. And you know, it's a weird name, but all that it's doing is subtracting one shape from another. So I extruded these interior curves and then I used that to subtract it from the overall shape. That's how I arrived at this stage. In the next step, I'm using the same basic procedure, I have a curve right here, and I've extruded it into a surface. I'm then using the trim command, which is similar in many ways to the Boolean difference command. I'm using the trim command to trim away this upper area of the guitar. Now we have that contour. Then in this last stage, we're just going to round over these edges. The way that we do that is using another command called fillet edge. It essentially, you select all the edges that you want to, to apply to, and then you select the radius that you're going to use, and it fillets the edge. It's really quite simple, and that's the basic process for how we make the guitar. The back of the guitar is pretty much the same thing. You can see I already have it modeled here. That, that's pretty much it. And you'll notice on my finished guitar, I actually ignored modeling some areas. Like this curve, I didn't even bother to model it. The truth is, any of these 2D shapes where you're just going to be doing a regular 2D pocket operation, you don't need to model them. I find it helpful to see how deep I'm cutting and to get an overall idea of the guitar that I'm making, but it's not necessary. You can simply specify when you're machining it how deep you want that to cut. So that's the process for how you model the guitar and next I'm going to explain how to toolpath the guitar so that the machine can eventually run it. Alright, 
So I have RhinoCam open on the left side of my screen here. You can see that it adds two modules. The top one is all of my operations and the bottom one is a tool library. So right now I'm just dealing with two tools. I have a 3 8 inch down shear. That's a flat tool and a 3 8 inch ball end that I'm going to use for all of the 3D parts of the guitar. And I'll give you a brief overview of what all of these are doing. So the first operation you see here, it's a 2D contour and it's just uh, pocketing all of this, just hollowing it out. We call that a pocket. You can see that it's doing it in two passes. And that's three eighths inch down per pass, which, you know, if you've seen some other videos about making guitar online, then you might notice that's pretty substantial. A lot of the desktop routers aren't able to cut with a bit this big, this fast, this deep, but it's not a problem for the Laguna IQ, which is part of the reason why I like the machine so much. We're doing a similar operation kind of for each area. In this next one, it's cutting further down in here. Then we're cutting out this back area We'll cut out this section right here. And lastly, we're cutting out this area, which you can see, I didn't even bother to model that as I explained before. But if I go to the simulate tab really quickly, you can see all I did was specify the depth. I actually did that in the operation itself. So there was no need to model it. Which, you know, in the end, that's just up to the individual user, which way they prefer to do it. I just wanted to show both here. And lastly, we're doing a horizontal roughing pass. So this is still using the flat bit. I'll show you what it does. Let me slow that down a little bit. So it's cutting layers and it does it in such a way that, you know, that's obviously not the final end product that we want, but it's carving away a lot of the material so that when we come back with our finished bit, there's very little resistance on the bit, which makes the finish that much better. That's what the finish bit will do. I'll play that really quick. Let me speed that up. So lots of little passes one after the other. And you wind up with a really smooth surface. You can see that's the uh, round over bit that we're using. And then finally, we're going to do the outer curve around the entire guitar. So that's, you know, that's this. And that's a pretty nice operation. You don't get that in simpler programs. It's called between two curves finishing. And it allows you to select an interior and exterior curve. It stays within that boundary the entire time. And it tries to match those shapes. So following these curves, but it's looking at the model itself. It's kind of doing both. So you can see here what that means. That's what it's going to do. It's pretty nice because as opposed to just doing a regular horizontal uh, pass, this one will actually follow the contour down towards this direction. It doesn't just like traverse in layers or something like that. It actually follows the curve down. So what that means for you, if you're using this program and you're using that operation is it gets done faster and it usually looks quite a bit cleaner than if you were to do it some other way. Now let's talk a little bit about the flip because the flip is an important part of any guitar. I, I don't know any guitars off the top of my head where it doesn't require a flip at all. So whenever you're flipping, I've seen some cool vacuum jigs that companies make if they're doing a lot of the same guitar. But if you're just, you know, doing one guitar, one of the easiest ways to do it is just by indexing it with pins. So you see here, I have some half inch circles that I've cut down. And if you look at the tool path, I've actually told it to cut down a little bit beyond the material itself. So it's going into the spoil board. What that means is I can drop in some dowels that are half inch and I can flip the part and it'll be correct when I flip it. 
that's part of the reason why I've centered the part within the material and on the origin is so that when I do the flip, everything is perfectly aligned. The process for the back side of the guitar is going to be very similar to the front side. I've created a separate file where the guitar is flipped. You can do it in the same file if you want, but I find it a lot more confusing. I like to have them just be two separate files. That's personal preference though. So you'll see I have the holes that I use to index and then the process itself, quite simple. There's some 2D pocketing. And then there's the 3D roughing pass. 3D finishing pass. And you'll notice it looks like there's some roughness here, but if you zoom in, like it's actually negligible. It's extremely smooth and that won't even be noticeable on a machine. That's like 0 0.000001. And then lastly, we have the round over finishing, which is done the exact same way. I split it up into three areas because this particular area is a little bit tricky. It does have to shrink down into a smaller fillet uh, for the guitar neck area and then widen back up. So just to make things easier on myself, I split it up into three sections. Again, it's just following the curves. So what that means is, just to show you, if I click, Just to show you, what I've done is I just broke apart the curve. So this area is following this curve. And then I did the same operation and just selected this other curve. And that that's why that those are done in three separate sections. Lastly, we have the cutout. And let me just show you what that looks like. Pretty straightforward. You'll see that I made it out of two separate curves, so this middle area isn't being cut at all. That makes this very, very large tab, which we'll use that tab to hold the part together because uh, otherwise there's nothing holding it in place. Obviously, if you look at what some of the companies do that, that make tons and tons and tons of guitars, if it's like the same guitar over and over again, you can create a vacuum jig, which will hold the guitar in place while you're cutting it out. That's a great way to do it. But if you're just making a guitar once, you can use the indexing method with these tabs and you're good to go. So I'll just show you what the simulation looks like. You'll also notice it's not cutting all the way through. That's because we already know we've rounded off the front side of the guitar. So there's no need to go all the way through the material. It's already going beyond that rounded edge and that's it you know that's the guitar you're done you're gonna see i'm using that 3 8 inch down cutter and we're cutting passes until we reach the depth that we need that pass is the diameter of the bit in this case 3 8 inch so i'm cutting that deep per pass as many passes are needed to achieve the depth that I want to cut. And that's pretty good for what you can do on a desktop router. A lot of machines wouldn't be able to cut that deep per pass, and they do, definitely wouldn't be able to do it as fast as what we're cutting right now. Next, we're rounding over the part, and to do that, we're gonna use that ball end and it's going to do passes slightly over from the previous one until it achieves whatever 3D shape we want. A 
As far as post-processing goes, all I did was uh, cut off the tabs on the bandsaw and then sand everything down with 80 grit and then 220 grit sandpaper. I'd say it took about 10 minutes and that's it. For those of you that love making guitar by hand, uh, probably the best way to go about this is to simply skip the 3D cuts entirely that I'm doing and just focus on the 2D cuts, which go by really quickly. Then you get you know, the body with all the cutouts and you're able to just quickly get into the fun part, the, you know, all the contouring involved. Uh, so it gets you to that stage very quickly with no effort. As you can see, we're using these little metal pins. They're a half inch to index our part. You could use wooden dowels. Uh, I've also seen people, like if you're really making a lot of guitars, you could create a vacuum clamping system. But ultimately, this is really all that's necessary so that when you do that part, it is perfectly center. So that when you cut the back, it all lines up. Once again, you can find all of the parts that I use in the video in the description below. I just finished up the guitar over the weekend and I have to say, it looks amazing. And for the cost of the parts, it sounds really good too. Thanks again for watching. I hope you found this very informative and stay tuned for more videos from Laguna Tools and me, Max Miller.